Hey everyone, welcome back to the Nintendo Prime. I hope you're ready for a lot of high energy today uh, because I'm going to be giving you guys all the energy I can in this very video and then maybe taking a nap. And why is that? Well, one, I'm extra tired today, so I'm in this overtired state because my children woke me up super early around 3.30, 4.30 in the morning. Uh, I haven't been <laughs> to sleep set, so mine's going a little nuts. But besides that, it's also because we're going to be talking about Zelda. You see this like this? You know, what song is this, huh? This is from Ocarina of Time, huh? What song is it? Tell me. Tell me now. Um, but we're going to be talking about Zelda today because we haven't really spent a lot of time talking about the Legend of Zelda series uh, as much as I would like to at this channel. Uh, Zelda is near and dear to my heart. I used to run very popular Zelda websites uh, for 20 years, whether it was Zelda Domain back in the day. Obviously, uh, Zelda Informer is what most people know me from. I did do a little bit of smidger writing at Zelda Dungeon, and I used to run the Zelda Universe podcast. Well, not really run the podcast, but ZeldaUniverse.net, I used to run the news segment on their Zelda podcast, which I don't even think they have anymore. Uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, I also hosted the Zelda Informer podcast, and this channel used to be called the Zelda Informer YouTube channel, hence why you'll be like, what, this channel's 13 years old? Well, yeah, but it's only been Nintendo Prime for four, so it, you know, we've only really been doing YouTube seriously for four years. But that's neither here nor there. That's obviously my past and my history uh, in the Zelda fan community and obviously my history with the Zelda series in general, playing every single Zelda game that's pretty much ever existed. Uh, not necessarily all the fan-made games, but all of the, uh, you know, even this Philips CDI, you know, those games as well. I, I've dabbled in. I've dabbled in all of the Tingle games, all that jazz, uh, with fan translations on some of the ones that never came out of Japan. But here's the thing. Breath of the Wild 2 is coming out next year. At least this is what Nintendo has told us, right? It's coming next year. But what the hell do, else do we have to look forward to besides a little bit of Zelda Game & Watch action? Skyward Sword HD is out. So what remakes and remasters are coming next? And would these games coming actually affect the release of Breath of the Wild 2? After all, we've had rumors from every corner of the internet this year. Remember the whole Zelda 35th anniversary? And Oh, we might get Ocarina of Time HD. We might get Majora's Mask HD. Twilight Princess. Um, the Wind Waker. What about Oracle? Of, you know, the Oracle series. Oracle of Ages. Or, you know, the Minish Cap. Like, all these games, are we going to get remakes and remasters? Like, you know, we, we, it happened to Wind Waker. Can it happen to Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks? And, you know, Link's Awakening got one, so everything's on the table, right? Like, that's what it feels like right now. Everything is on the table. But because the 35th anniversary is sort of come and went at this point, granted, technically it's being celebrated with that Zelda Game & Watch, um, but it's going to come and go pretty much without a whimper, without even a tweet from Nintendo. Nintendo went all out on the tweets on Metroid's uh, 35th anniversary. They did the same on the 25th anniversary for Pokemon, uh, and they, they didn't really for Donkey Kong. But they also didn't really for uh, Zelda as well this year. So it's really interesting I'm watching them watch the 35th anniversary of Zelda come and go without Nintendo doing much after what they did for Metroid, what they obviously did in the past for Mario. However... Just because they're letting it come and go uh, without a whimper doesn't mean that there wasn't some validity uh, to some of these rumors. And we're going to revisit some of them uh, and obviously my primary source for those rumors. And then uh, move forward and get what games you hope are coming next from Nintendo's remake, remaster, Zelda mill they have going with quite a few companies involved. And we're going to talk about that. But before we do, we're already a few minutes in. Enter to win a Switch OLED. That's right. We're giving away a Switch OLED. OLED, like now, sort of, like it gets announced actually in a live stream uh, in the beginning of October, but still, you can enter now. All you got to do is be subscribed. That's it. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you on the other side of the intro. All right, so... If you guys remember before E3, that's really when a lot of the rumors were ramping up. And you got to remember, E3, pre-E3 time, is essentially rumor mill city when it comes to all video game news. Like, when you go to the Gaming Leaks and Rumor Reddit, oh, there's a couple new posts a day. But, you know, in the month lead up to E3, there's, like, you know, dozens and dozens of new rumors popping up. Uh, and if you go to 4chan, obviously, the rumor city never ends, but we kind of dismiss most of 4chan's offerings unless there's something that seems to have some of it come true already so then it's like all oh, right with it if like half of this came true and they said this other thing's happening later maybe we should pay attention to that just like you know there's rumors oh no there's going to be a september nintendo direct well everything that we needed to happen 
for a September Nintendo Direct to occur has happened, right? We got an Indie World in August because Indie Worlds typically predate, um, you know, come before, a month before uh, Nintendo Directs. And then obviously we're getting the Pokemon Presents out of the way, which by the way, Pokemon Presents also <laughs> often happen shortly before a Nintendo Direct. So we're kind of set up for a Nintendo Direct, but I'm not saying we're going to hear about any new Zelda stuff at this Direct, but I am curious about what new Zelda stuff is going to be coming because after the release of Skyward Sword HD, which continues to stay at the top of the charts, uh, it, it, it was at the top of the charts in, in the MPD. It's been at the top of the charts in Japan, essentially since release. I think it took one week off for a new release and then, then popped back up. Uh, it's obviously probably sold four or five, maybe six million at this point. I don't know if it's going to quite get to ten, uh, but it, it's definitely outsold the original release on Wii. And we obviously saw the sales success of things like Link's Awakening also outsell the original release of Skyward Sword. Uh, it makes you wonder, what does Nintendo have next in store? And the obvious answer is Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD, which, by the way, Jeff Grubb, along with other uh, journalists out there, have already said are happening, right? Like, we're getting these games. We're getting them eventually. Nintendo's, like, keeping them in their back pocket in case Breath of the Wild 2 doesn't make it next year, which would make sense because the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess are two games that are probably going to sell even better than Skyward Sword HD, uh, despite the fact that they've already been put in HD once on Wii U, a platform that most gamers, most Nintendo gamers, most of the Switch audience never even owned, or could argue had the opportunity to own, although I guess they had four years where they could have bought the damn thing and they didn't. Uh, it wasn't like it was hard to get back in the day. So yeah, that, that is one of those things where um, it, it is possible that Jeff Grubb and others are correct that Twilight Princess HD and Wind Waker HD are just kind of being held hostage by Nintendo if they need a release during a period when they're not going to get out their typical schedule. Uh, the same thing we believe is true, by the way, with the Metroid Prime Trilogy HD, which we believe exists at this point. Too many uh, sources have come out about this, about how Nintendo's just pocketing it until they're ready to talk about Metroid Prime 4. And likewise, they could be pocketing those two games in case there's a major delay in Breath of the Wild 2, because they're going to obviously keep up their track record of a Zelda game per year. I'm not sure if you guys realize this. There's basically been a Zelda game per year coming, uh, whether it was a new game or a remake, remaster, or a spin-off like Hyrule Warriors um, happening every single year for quite some time now. They're, they've almost kirby the franchise but done it without having to rush zelda games out the door right like they still give you the new games but they just give you remakes and remasters uh in between all of that and this year it was obviously skyward sword hd you can argue zelda game and watch if you want but the but the big one was skyward sword hd this year last year was age of calamity year before it was Link's awakening year before that was hyrule warriors definitive edition ported over and then the year before that was obviously breath of the wild so you can kind of see the pattern there and it actually goes back a little bit you know, a little bit further back than that, but we'll set that all aside and focus on the other games. So if you guys remember a YouTuber named Game Over Jesse, super friendly guy. I've met him um, a couple times in real life. He, he's, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever seen. We've had him on our podcast. Uh, congratulations, by the way, man, if you're watching this video. I know you uh, quite recently crossed 100,000 subscribers. Woo! Yeah, baby! Hopefully I'll join you there sometime, maybe next year or something. I don't know. I don't really know. I guess it said in the last year I've gained like 10,000 subs, so I, we'll see what happens. But here's what I do know. According to sources he has had that he seems pretty confident are connected to Nintendo in some way, things like Ocarina of Time HD or a remake or something of Ocarina of Time seems to be in the works somewhere. And when you think about the companies that Nintendo has had handle their remakes and remasters, companies that come to mind are things like Tantalus. Tantalus was behind Twilight Princess HD and Skyward Sword HD. You have Grezzo, of course. They did the Link's Awakening remaster. They also uh, helped create Triforce Hero and yeah by the way they did the work on Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D and you could see how Maj Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask 3D could be HDified which we have seen through emulators of course and brought over to the Nintendo Switch so there is something in there and obviously Grezzo's last Zelda game was Link's Awakening and they have a history of always working on something Zelda so they probably have something Zelda in the works obviously we know their more recent work was Miitopia but that doesn't mean that they don't have something Zelda coming in the future so that opens the floodgates to really anything and I think that's where some people get hopes that maybe the Link's Awakening style gets applied to like the Oracle games or something like that there's a lot of hope out there and that's a lot of the Oracle um, rumors the Oracle of Ages Oracle 
of Seasons rumors that I have seen anyways come mostly off speculation of that Link's Awakening engine is so great it should be reused again and these games kind of make sense to reuse that. Uh, but then you have to look at you know a little bit deeper into Nintendo's past. Um, you know, you start to look at what other games could use a fresh coat of paint, could use a reimagining. And you start to think about games like my much beloved Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. I'm a huge fan of Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. A massive fan. It is one of my favorite games of all time. Unfortunately, most of the things that to me make it such a great game are things that don't really appeal to consumer base. So I already got my version of Zelda 2, the original. I'm great with that. But I'm cool with a reimagining and a recreation of it in a modern engine with up the updated gameplay mechanics that are suited more to a modern age. It can help popularize that game, including things like including the storytelling from the manual in the game itself. That would be a welcome addition since we don't really get game manuals anymore. And I understand we're getting Zelda 1 and Zelda 2 and all that jazz on the uh, Zelda Game & Watch, but I, I think we can understand that's like a novelty collector's item. I don't think there's going to be too many people buying those Game & Watch systems. Maybe you let me know. Maybe you're one of like the eight people in the world that bought a Mario Game & Watch last year specifically to play the games. I think most people just want it as like a collector's item. Yeah, it happens to have a few games. I, maybe you've tried out like the first day and then you put it back in the box and sit it on the shelf. I don't know. Like it's a, there, there's no appeal to me to play the games that way on such a tiny screen. You can already play, you know, those Zelda games on your Switch with the, with the uh, NES app. So, yeah, I, I honestly think that that's just, um, you know, a, a, few sh a few cards short of a full deck in terms of what we would like to see. Uh, but again, this opens the floodgates to everything in the Zelda series. Whether Tantalus is working on something, whether Grezzo's working on something, whether Nintendo's internal team, which by the way has only ever actually remade a single game, that being the Wind Waker HD, is working on something, or whether there's games already ready to go. It only takes roughly six months to port an already existing game with updated visuals to the system. We saw this with Twilight Princess HD. We saw this with Wind Waker HD. We saw this with Skyward Sword HD. It's a roughly a six month process to take already existing games and put them in HD on the platform. So if you want to go with Ocarina of Time 3D, updating those assets, HDifying them like Miitopia, and bringing them over to the Switch would only take about six months. So we're not talking about long dev times here. When we're talking about the Wind Waker HD and Twilight Princess HD, the dev times could be even shorter because they're already in HD bump the FPS up to 60 and, you know, obviously change up the UI and, and, and the inventory system a little bit because you don't have the two screens. And bada bing, bada boom, you got yourself a quality port to switch to sell at 60 bucks a pop when, you know, you start thinking about Skyward Sword HD only taking six months and then, yeah, you are charging 60 bucks a pop for that. But then again, they only took about six months to put together Super Mario 3D All-Stars, which was three games, and they charged you 60 bucks a pop for that. And then you got to look back to Nintendo's Path, Link's Awakening, which actually got about a year and a half worth of development. That was actually remade from the ground up. More justifiable at 60 bucks a pop, but some people even still question top-down Zelda. Is that really worth 60? Same thing they're asking about side-scrolling Metroid. Is it really worth 60? Look, spend your money however you want. You don't have to like the pricing of Zelda games. You don't have to like the pricing that Nintendo throws out there. Nobody does. See this on the 35th anniversary thing with the Wind Waker, Skyward Sword, and Twilight Princess? You don't have to like any of those games or think any of them are worth more than $5. That's okay. That's your own choice. But I think as a Zelda fan, I just like having all my games playable on a single platform. If I can get them playable in HD, 60 FPS, redone visuals, I'll take that. Now, I want more. I want content. I want quality of life changes. And we did get quality of life changes in Skyward Sword HD. We also got a couple new bugs that they have since patched out. Uh, but I am just looking forward to what's next. Obviously, Breath of the Wild 2, that's the big kahuna. When you're out there fishing, you cast your line, and you're you're bringing it in. You're out there fly fishing with your high boots, or you're out there on, on your boat or on your dock just trying to catch that big one, right? You're out there trying to catch the, 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 the mythical, you know, eight-foot bass that doesn't really exist, but you really, you've heard stories, so you want to catch it. That's kind of what Breath of the Wild 2 is. It's that mythical eight-foot bass, except we know it's real. All of us have seen glimpses of it. Enough glimpses to be like, yeah, we're going to get it. But until we get that big kahuna, that big catch, what's going to happen then? Do we really think another Zelda game isn't going to come out before that one? Could a Zelda remake remaster port come again before that game comes out, likely as the major holiday title next year? I think so. 
And if at least one more is coming before that, what is it? And what would you like it to be? In fact, it, it could be the same question. What you like it to be could be what it is. Or if you think it's going to be this game. Like, it's going to be Twilight Princess HD, but I want it to be Oracle of Ages, Oracle of Seasons Remake. Like, you guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. And you know what? I'll probably take a few of these comments and highlight them in our upcoming podcast episode where we're going to be talking exactly about this topic for part of the podcast. We'll also be talking about the Pokemon Presents and a few other things uh, that are on deck for this week on our podcast this Wednesday live at 8 p.m. Central right here on Nintendo Prime's YouTube channel. So yeah, uh, what are you guys' thoughts? What do you think is going to come? What do you think is going to happen? I appreciate you, all of you guys. You guys are lovely people stealing a line from Alex from Nintendo Life. I'll catch you guys in the next video.